After holding its annual tech summit, Qualcomm has confirmed its next chip for flagship smartphones throughout most of 2022, and it's set to be called the confusing Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, making it the first chip to use the company's new branding and naming system. But what does this mean for you? Well, let's find out. Thanks for watching 9to5 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be notified about all our future uploads. If you have even a passing interest in smartphones, you'll know that every single year Qualcomm has released a tiered approach to their lineups with the 800 series usually being reserved for flagship smartphones. Around this time every year, we've seen new chipsets arrive. We had the 888 last year, the 865 the year before, and the 855 before that, and so on and so forth. But for late 2021 and for the majority of 2022, realistically, Qualcomm is dropping the commonly used naming convention in favour of a slightly more confusing numbered system. That means that no, there is no Snapdragon 898 or 900, instead it's Snapdragon 8, as in Series 8, Generation 1 or Gen 1. Now that's going to confuse things over time, but what about the details? Well, realistically the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is an octa-core chip with a 1 plus 3 plus 4 configuration or setup led by the ARM Cortex-X2 Prime Core that's clocked up to 3 GHz, which is actually 2.995 GHz to be precise. There are three Cortex-A71 performance cores at 2.5 GHz and four 1.8 Cortex-A51S efficiency cores. It's also very important to note that this is the first Qualcomm chip to feature ARM V9 CPU cores here too. In all, the Cairo CPU is said to be 20% faster while offering power savings of up to 30%. There is support for up to 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz LPDDR5 memory on smartphones packing this chip, which is unchanged from the Snapdragon 888 Plus, which was released early this year. Additionally, this chip is also built on a four nanometer down from five nanometer process and the Adreno GPU is said to be up to 30% faster with up to 25% power savings compared to the previous generation, which sounds incredible, at least on paper, because Qualcomm has not actually officially supplied data on the actual names of the Cairo CPU and Adreno GPU or the configurations of these like they have with previous years, and we're not entirely sure why they've done that. Qualcomm is focusing on several tent poles with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and photography and videography are at the very forefront of those future efforts. On the photography front, there's an 18-bit Spectra image signal processor that is capable of capturing 4096 times more camera data than its previous 14-bit predecessor, which was found in the Snapdragon 888 and 888 Plus. In practice, this has the ability to take 240 12 megapixel shots in one second, plus there's the ability to export 18-bit raw images for further tweaking and tuning as you happen to see fit should devices provide the opportunity to do that. Video-wise, there's 8K HDR capture at up to 30 frames per second that even allows you to take simultaneous 64 megapixel images. In a similar manner as well to the cinematic mode found on the iPhone, there's also a dedicated bokeh engine when recording at 4K UHD for those fake blur effects that you see in the background. On top of that, you can also snap 36 megapixel photos from three lenses simultaneously or a 200 megapixel shot from a single lens at a time. The maximum sensor configurations in video include up to 36 megapixel triple cameras at 30 frames per second with absolutely zero shutter lag, up to 64 and 36 megapixel dual camera setups at 30 frames per second and that includes zero shutter lag as well, and up to a 108 megapixel single camera setup at 30 fps with zero shutter lag included. Elsewhere on the 8 Gen 1, the 3rd Gen Sensing Hub adds an always-on ISP to complement the AI processor, the SP, and the memory. This allows the front-facing camera to run with what is extremely low power consumption for things such as always-on face unlock that makes it possible to lock if your face isn't present. Speaking of machine learning, the 7th Gen AI engine is four times faster as well thanks to uh, better than previous AI task performance as a result of these improvements. To highlight some of these extra hardware additions to the chip itself, Qualcomm is touting a number of extra software partnerships with the 8 Gen 1 2. There's an integrated Leica Lights Look filter for the cameras that helps recreate the camera brand's bokeh and colour style, while the Sonda Health can also use the on-device AI improvements to analyse vocal patterns to monitor physical and mental health and fitness levels. This specifically entails looking for conditions like 
asthma, depression, and COVID-19. There's also a natural language processing from Hugging Face so that your device can now analyze and intelligently group and prioritize all of your notifications. Consumer interest and OEM adoption of these capabilities though does remain to be seen and it will likely be on a device by device basis. Other capabilities of the chip include a fourth gen Snapdragon 865 5G modem that can reach up to 10 gigabits per second, uh, Wi-Fi 6 and 6E speeds up to 3.6 gigabits per second and Bluetooth 5.2. The chip also features a trust management engine and supports Android Ready SE for digital car keys and driver's licenses, which means you don't necessarily have to head out with your keys or your wallet in the future. If you're wondering though when you might see the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, a number of OEMs have confirmed devices will be arriving soon, including the Xiaomi Mi 12 series, the Realme GT2 Pro and Oppo Find X4 series, to name just a few that have been directly confirmed, but we'll also see devices powered by the new chip from the likes of Black Shark, Honor, iQ, Motorola, Nubia, OnePlus, Opposite, Sharp, Sony, Vivo and ZTE over the course of the next few months. Expect to see the very first device though using the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 by the end of 2021 and then more beyond in 2022. So that is the confusingly named Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which is a follow on from the 888 and 888 Plus seen earlier in the year. That's it in a nutshell, basically. We'd love to know your thoughts. Do you even care? Do you care that your new smartphone or potentially any other devices will be powered by this chip? If you do, or if you don't, slap a comment down below. But until next time, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.